Hi everyone, we are back. This is Trapanto part two. I uh, have this ready and ready to go. So I'm about to do the free motion quilting. Feed dogs are down. Top tension is on around about five and a half to six. And my needle needs to be over to the left. I don't like it in the middle. Just something that I don't like. Um, now, oh, it's just another brain. Got my gloves on. They're very important. I don't have a new needle on. That is also very important, but um, I haven't done that. Uh, paint on my hands is dry, just so you know. And um, I, I'm ready to go. So if there's any questions at any time, please feel free to ask because we are live on Facebook and I can see your comments and we can go through that at the time. With something like this, hi Naomi, I'm just going to move this out of the way. With something like this, you can break it down in, into sections and really create some divide and conquer areas. Um, or you can really just quilt um, extensively tight, tight quilting all around in all different types of patterns. Sometimes it's nice to actually have um, like lots of little bubbles and you know or a tight stipple and that really makes this one pop up out of out of it out of the fabric so um, yeah so I'm going to start doing that and sort of talk you through what I'm doing at the same time so I always put my um, thread at the top because uh, I can bury that thread underneath and I can also, is that rain? Yeah, it is, yeah. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I can bury that thread underneath and I can also, um, I can trim the threads at the back. So I've got myself fairly low, like to the ground actually. I'm going to lift that chair up, uh, that's better. And I'll hold that area with my gloves and my hands and just put a little bit of pressure on just so I can really stipple, uh, stipple or or stitch around that so hopefully you can hear me over the rain and uh, we'll get get on with it so I'm gonna do some circles and a circle is going one way and then going the other if you keep going in the same direction you're going to end up um, going just over the same spots all the time so you sort of to get to another direction you have to stipple uh, sorry you have to travel on the same area that you've already done hopefully it plays nice with the internet now it's going to be very hard for you to see because I've got tone on tone here I might zoom in a little bit more See if you can see that a little bit more. And I'll try and keep my hands out of the way. I'm just going to put my foot down a little. Hi, Cassandra. And hi, Rose. So around one way and then around the other. One way and then around the other. Now, if you're going to fill this whole area with little pebbles or bubbles or circles, whatever you want to call them, uh, you really want to love it because it takes a long time. Same with a micro stipple. It takes a really long time to fill it. But we do have to do this fairly heavy stitching. I really love that rain. So I'm doing some larger bubbles and then I'm doing some smaller ones. I'm making them all sorts of sizes and shapes. And I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. So if, if it gets in the way, you need to let me know. Oops, guys, get the jump. I do need to speed that up a bit. Hi Louise. Hopefully you can see it. I know it's a little bit glare. It's probably zooming in on my hand more than anything. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way. The camera.
That's really coming down. Really coming down. So it gets a bit harder around the edge of these uh, bits here because they're poofy. So you've just got to maneuver your foot, uh, your fabric around so until you get the right spot. I wonder what that yellow was, but it's a reflection. I'm just going to take this out and show you, are you getting some rain? We've had large amounts of rain this day now. Now a quart of mil. Yeah, really heavy rain. So you should be able to see that now. And you should be able to see how that's really puffy and that's pushed right down. And you keep going around. Does it have to be the same pattern? You can do a bit of a stipple and then some more pebbles um, and just swap it out, out a little bit so it's not so you know, regimented. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll get that really um, organic sort of look to it. So I'm just seeing whether I'm on the front or the back and I think, I've got this feeling I could be on the back. It's hard to tell because it all looks the same. I don't know. I should have marked it. Ooh, we'll just keep going. All we have Sydney is Brisbane and community. Oh, really? Do you do you use variegated thread or what? This is a white thread. Thanks, Cassandra. Anyway, we'll keep going. I'm not sure whether that's the front or back. I can't really tell. Like I said, it doesn't matter too much because I've used white and both. Eh, should be right. So we'll keep that thread out of the way. So it's a real figure eight, around to the one way and then go back the other. You can travel around one way and then back the other. And I, I'm always going back over stitches so it gets rather thready, which doesn't matter too much because you won't see those little jumps here and there because my fabric is white and my thread is white. So unless you've got a microscope and you're looking at it, you're not really going to see that sort of stuff. But I do like to do different sizes and different shapes, not always circular. Um, I like to uh, keep it a little bit more realistic. I mean, if you can do perfect circles every time, you know, good luck to you. I think it looks lovely, but I certainly can't do it. It looks um, almost too perfect. <laughs> what is the type of stitching called this is free motion quilting no nothing silly about that question um, there's no actual stitch number or anything like that well done that looks amazing thank you Lynn um, 
So I'm just moving the, the fabric around under the needle as it's moving and uh, that's classed as free motion quilting. Uh, not a zigzag, it's just a straight stitch. Now I'm going to do a, a little stipple and keep it small and that will also create the same sort of effect and because it's so small if you happen to go back over a line no one's going to see it it's so tiny I mean you can do a mic like a really tiny one like half inch hexi uh, sorry um what they call it crosshatch all the way around this and that will really push it all down doesn't have to be free motion um, it's just something that I do and if you're comfortable with it you can do this if not then you can always just use the walking foot and and do your lines nothing wrong with that either It's not called Toronto the puppy. Yeah, yeah, the puppy thing. Uh, the puppy thing is yes, is Trapunto. This this technique here is Trapunto. Um, this this stuff here. All right, I'm still gonna keep going that way. I think. All right, so I've done about that much with the bubbles and I've done about the same in the, in the stipple. So I'm gonna switch back to some bubbles now.
Okay, I'm going to cut that off and just show you what I've done so you can start to see that hard with the light behind it. There it is. The stipple is there, the bubbles are there. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. And like I say, you really want to love doing bubbles if you're going to fill up the whole thing with bubbles because you'll be here for a week and a half just doing that alone. So I'm going to mix it up a little bit and do some swirls. Um, they'll be tight and lots of little lines backwards and forwards. I'm going to start here and build up around this area here. All right, so from here around, so I'm sort of working towards myself. And needle down. So a swirl, you come in like a snail shell and then back out and then back again, you echo again and then another one and they feed off each other. And if I want to get to the other side, I literally just echo, go back across where I've just been and I'm using uh, the this edge of the foot as a guide as to how far out I need to be
Sorry, I was just, uh, I get into a bit of a mode when I do that. So that is the, oh, there it is there. Uh, I'll try and put the, get the light from behind it. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. There it is there. This swirls. Um, and it fills up a lot quicker. Filled up that area very quickly. So, yeah, and I don't make them really regimented. That, that's probably too regimented. I should have come up here and made a little peek out of it or something. Um, and then I'm going to come back and maybe do a little bit of a stipple. And I'll keep going around and around and around and until I get back to here. And then I'll start a different type. So I might do, you know, a different um, design on this spot above the circles. It'll be a complete different um, design. So I'm just going to zoom out a little. Um, so that, yeah, it, it'll be different. So no two designs will be, um, butting up against each other. So the, there's your stipple, there's your bubbles and there's your swirls. Um, you know, I might turn around and go, well, you know, I might do some, some more stipple here for, you know, for a little bit. And then I might come along and do maybe some, I don't know, paisleys or something like that. So I will change it up all the time. Um, if you've got any questions while I'm doing it, please ask. I'll stop occasionally and check on the comments. But I'm going to do a little bit of stippling. Okay, so I've just stippled that little area there. Um, and if you've noticed that I left a bit of an indent in there, that's purposely done so that it gives it peaks and valleys and makes it a little bit more interesting than just a straight line across there. So next is to do a different design and we're going to work across that way. So I might do some paisley and I need to push my foot down a little bit. So Paisley is sort of like a teardrop and then back again and back again. And same sort of scenario as the swirls, but a different shape. So I'll come down a little teardroppy thing, then another and another. And then I'll come out again 
and do it again one and two and the gap sometimes I'll go three depending on which side I want to get to the gap is the farthest part is at the top and they're closer at the sides and when I want to go around a corner or something like that or add a bit of um, shape to it I will go and turn it um, and turn, turn the teardrop side of it around to the other side so I'll actually shape it in the direction I've got to go and then work around it that way sometimes they could have four it doesn't really matter um, as long as I keep them reasonably tight um, because I've got to keep the, the quilting heavy. That's what makes the trapunto a trapunto is the quilting side of it is heavy. Sometimes I'll have just two over them, two loops. Sometimes it's three. It just depends on what the area calls for. And sometimes it's literally just one, just to fill up that little space. I can hear something happening. Oh, all good. Thank you, guys. I think that might have been the bobbin actually jumping. I'm not too sure. We're just going to keep going until she breaks down.
Right, so to show you what I've just done. Let's see if we can get that on the camera. There it is there, just here. So they sort of fold on top of each other a lot. And again, they're not, not even, which I like. Um, and now I'm going to do some bubbles. Might just turn it that way. So I've got that open toe edge there. And I'm going to butt these right up to those um, paisleys. Large and small circles. Soon. Um, and Mag says hi everyone. You make it look so easy. <laughs> oh dear. I have my moments. Um, don't always make things look easy. Sometimes I make things look really hard. Um, so now I've done a bit of paisley. I've got a bit of an alteration, like altering thing here. 
might just do another bit of stipple here and then the swirls here so I'll do that I'll go around once with this while you're on the camera and then um, and then I'll stop uh, otherwise the video will go for like ever so um, and I'll do the rest off camera um, I forgot what I'm doing yep stipple <laughs> uh, you love that So yeah, again, I'm butting up the design one next to the other, very, very close. Alrighty, and we'll do some swirls. Oops, sorry, wrong conversation. Telling my daughter when dinner is ready. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I wonder what the soon was. Um, so now I've done that little bit of stipple there. I'm going to do the swirls again that I did on the other side. And that's it for the day because my shoulders are starting to really ache.
Okay, I remember doing Trapanto by hand and filling it with different coloured cotton balls back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, that's a, that's an oldie. That's a, uh, Shadow Trapunto. They also do that with, um, uh, they put balls, uh, not balls, um, what do they call it? Um, you put wool behind so that you can really see it. I might just put this camera up there and zoom out a little. And you can see the whole thing there pretty much. There it is. Now if I zoom in, you'll see all the different ones around. See? Hmm. That's it. stay up there we go all righty so that's taken like oh nearly an hour just to do that 45 minutes um so but you can see how much this stands out when you push it back this back and that's not got any color there um but that's it's just so poofy um it's just gorgeous so uh yeah so working around there um, and you can see, or which I showed up close before, I've you know I've got started on these swirls here, and I've climbed over the top of those circles, and that would keep going along there, and then I'd change it again to um, to something else. I might get the circles and make them go over the stipple and that sort of stuff. So I'll sort of manipulate it and make them intertwine with each other. I could just go from there to a little bit of a stipple, and then to some. Um, uh, what they call it um, paisleys so so many different things so if I can get this up close enough for you to see you can see how I've started to come over come across here and then climb over the top of these circles so I can continue that on halfway across and then swap over to some some something else and keep going across so it's pretty cool so that is uh, Trapunto. That is the background. That's how you do it. You keep going. And like I say, you can crosshatch. And I mean tiny little crosshatches. And it'll look just as good um, as what I've done. They are really fun to do. You could do the thread in a different color. Of course, you're welcome to do that in a different color. And that will make it even stand out um, more, more again. Um, you can also uh, have this the whole thing as a, as a colour instead of white. I just used white because it was there and easy. Um, and uh, it looks rather classy, I think. But anyway, uh, and you can see the blood that I put on there before has come off. Uh, once I put water on it and washed away all those lines, uh, it came off as well quite easily. Obviously, your blood, your DNA, and that's how that works, getting off um, if you accidentally nick yourself while you're doing things you can and you put a bit of a spot of um, blood on there you can use your spit and get it off all right so um, that's everything for today there'll be no live sale today it'll be just these I think I've done plenty of videos for one day and um, I'm getting I'm going to go inside and, and put my feet up for a little while so uh, I will see you guys on Monday night thank you again for joining me and um, I hope you've enjoyed your uh, your video tutoring we'll see you later bye